各位记者。Good afternoon. Welcome to today's briefing. Now the floor is open for questions. 谢发言人，总台央视记者提问。据了解，六月七号举行。CCTV. We have learned that on June the 7th, China, Pakistan, and Iran held the first meeting of their trilateral consultation on counterterrorism. Can you share more? On June the 7th, DG Bai Tian of the Department of External Security of China's Foreign Ministry jointly held in Beijing the first meeting of the China-Pakistan-Iran trilateral consultation on counterterrorism and security at DG levels, with Mosavi, Assistant to the Foreign Minister and DG of South Asia of Iran's Foreign Ministry, and Hamid, DG of Counterterrorism Pakistan's Foreign Ministry. China's Assistant Foreign Minister Nong Rong met with the Pakistani and Iranian heads of delegation. The three sides held in-depth exchange of views on the regional counterterrorism situation and joint efforts to tackle the cross-border movement of terrorists, among other issues, and decided to institutionalize the trilateral consultation on counterterrorism and security. The meeting was a successful step taken by the three countries to act on the GSI and enhance regional security and stability. Terrorism is a common enemy. China firmly opposes and strongly condemns terrorism in all its manifestations. We stand ready to work with Pakistan, Iran, and other regional countries to crack down on terrorism and and endanger the interests of the three countries and regional security. China staged joint air patrols of Russia over the Pacific yesterday. Japan said that it is concerned about its national security as a result of the joint air patrols. Does China have any comment on Japan's concerns? China-Russia Air Patrol, and you can refer to the readouts from relevant departments of the Chinese authority. This joint patrol is not targeted on certain country and conforms with international law and norms. Next one, please. CCTV. The global debt monitor recently issued by the Institute of International Finance shows that the global debt stock has hit $305 trillion. The U.S. has the world's highest national debt, raising further concerns about U.S. government spending and borrowing costs. Do you have any comment? The U.S. is the world's largest economy and issuer of a major international reserve currency, hence the heavy spillover effect of its physical conditions and policy choices, and the importance for the U.S. to adopt responsible physical and monetary policies. However, the U.S. has long abused its dollar hegemony, borrowed recklessly, and pursued quantitative easing which knows no limit. This has spread U.S. inflation to other parts of the world, made debt problem and economic woes in some emerging economies and the developing countries even worse, and seriously held back global recovery. As the Treasury Secretary of the Nixon administration, John Connolly, once put it, the dollar is our currency, but it is your problem. We urge the U.S. to opt for responsible physical and monetary policies and work with other economies to enhance macroeconomic policy coordination, jointly safeguard international economic and financial stability, and contribute to global recovery. Next one, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to ask a question. News Agency. The ROK has been elected a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council. What is China's expectation for the ROK China consultations on the Korean Peninsula nuclear issue and other related issues in the Security Council? As the core mechanism of international collective security, the Security Council shoulders the primary responsibility of safeguarding international peace and security. The world counts on the Security Council to shoulder its responsibility and play its due role so as to promote the political settlement of hostile issues. We hope that after becoming part of the Security Council, the ROK can uphold equality, justice, and independence, advocate dialogue, cooperation, unity, and mutual trust, oppose antagonism and confrontation and double standards, adopt concrete actions to make 
positive contributions to the work of the Security Council and meet the aspiration of the international community. Next one, please. Thank you. Question from Reuters. Uh, Taiwan activated its air defense systems today after 37 Chinese military jets entered the air defense zone around the island. Why did China decide to do this on the same week it staged the joint air patrol with Russia? Are the two events connected? Thank you. Lutosha 我不了解你。I am not aware of the specifics that you mentioned. It is not related to foreign affairs. Taiwan is part of China, and China has unswearing determination in safeguarding national sovereignty and the territory integrity. And I have stated China's position just now. Next one, please. A uh, question from uh, Bloomberg. Uh, the U.S., Taiwan, and Japan will share real-time data from naval reconnaissance drones, reconnaissance drones. Um, this is according to the Financial Times, uh, citing four people familiar with the project. Uh, does the Foreign Ministry have any comment on this report that the U.S., Taiwan, and Japan will share real-time data? Thank you. 金融时报援引四名消息人士称美国、日本和台湾将共享侦查无人机的实时数据。中方对于金融时报的这篇报道有何评论? The One China Principle is a universally recognized norm in international relations, a prevailing consensus among the international community, and the political foundation of China-U.S. and China-Japan relations. The Taiwan question concerns China's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and is at the core of China's core interest. We're firmly opposed to any form of military contact with, between countries with diplomatic ties with China and the Taiwan region. We urge relevant countries to abide by the One China Principle, stop creating factors that could lead to the tensions in the Taiwan Strait. We will firmly safeguard our sovereignty, security, and development interests. Next one, please. China News Service, the latest reports issued by the World Bank and the OECD both revised up the growth forecast of the world and the major economies for 2023. The World Bank predicted that China's economy will grow by 5.6% in 2023, and the OECD set this figure at 5.4%. Both reports noted that China's reopening will provide impetus for world economic growth. Do you have any comment? Several international organizations, such as the UN, the World Bank, and the IMF, have recently raised their forecast for China's growth. Some of them even revised up the forecast more than once. It shows their confidence in China's economic prospect. The Chinese economy will continue to serve as an engine of growth and contribute to global economic recovery. We have also seen several executives of many transnational corporations coming to China recently, which is also a vote of confidence for China's economy. Foreign, business, foreign businesses value the enormous opportunities brought by China's robust economic recovery and consider the improving business environments here a favorable sign. They are upbeat about the Chinese market and are ready to invest in all directions in China. According to a recent CCPIT report, 97% of the survey the foreign companies rated China's foreign investment policy satisfied or above. The satisfaction rate in terms of accessing financial services and market access exceeded 80 percent. A report issued by the EU Chamber of Commerce in China indicates that the size of China's market, strong demand, the fast pace of commercialization of R&D results, and ample local talents steer a large share of European companies towards deeper localization, and close to 60 percent of the companies surveyed said they would increase R&D expenditure in China in the coming five years. An MTM China survey shows that 66% of U.S. companies
companies in China will maintain or increase investments in China in the coming two years. China will remain firmly committed to advancing high-level opening up and providing a more market-oriented, law-based and world-class business environments for companies of all countries. We welcome more foreign companies to invest in China, explore the Chinese markets, and share in China's development dividends. Next one, please. The latest poll by the European Council on Foreign Relations shows that the prevailing view is that China is a necessary partner. Many European leaders, including presidents of the European Council, presidents of the European Commission, French presidents, and the German Chancellor have recently said that decoupling from China is neither viable nor desirable and underlined the importance of maintaining contacts and cooperation with China. Do you have any comment? China and the EU are two major forces, big markets and important civilizations in the multipolar world. The China-EU relations rooted in solid public support, extensive mutual interests and similar strategic aspirations have withstood the test of time and shown strong resilience and potential. Since early this year, the two sides have maintained close high-level exchanges. Leaders had in-depth communication and reached important common understandings on enhancing strategic mutual trust, deepening cooperation, stepping up coordination and maintaining differences appropriately. As the poll shows, China and the EU are partners, not rivals. China stands ready to work with the EU to deliver on the common understandings of the leaders. Keep to the right direction cements the positive momentum of growth of ties, fully resume in-person exchanges at all levels, galvanize mutually beneficial cooperation in various fields to enrich and expand the dimensions of China-EU cooperation and provide more stability and certainty for a volatile and a turbulent world. Next question, please. Uh, Ukrainian news agency, uh, my question about the situation in Ukraine. Uh, after Russian military blew up the Kakhovka hydroelectric power plant dam on the Dnieper River, many settlements uh, were flooded and lives of thousand people at risk. Does China plan to provide humanitarian aid uh, to Ukrainians because of this disaster? I have stated relevant positions yesterday. We are seriously concerned about the destruction of relevant facilities and deeply worried about this humanitarian, economic, and ecological impact. We call on all parties to the conflict to abide by international humanitarian law and do everything possible to protect civilians and keep civilian facilities safe. The top priority is that all relevant parties should work to ease the current situation and join to respond to the disaster. China has already been, has always been playing a constructive role in our own way to ease the humanitarian situation in Ukraine. We have proposed six-point initiatives and sent multiple batches of humanitarian supplies to Ukraine. We would like to continue to do everything it can to render help to Ukraine. Next one, please. Uh, good afternoon. Question from AFP. Uh, the U.S. Ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns, on Wednesday accused China of failing to stop production of uh, fentanyl. Uh, he said he will keep pressure on China to shut down the ability of black market Chinese firm to sell the drug. Uh, we have not seen progress on this issue from the Chinese government, he said. Uh, is there something you want to say to address the U.S. ambassador's concerns? Thank you. 法新社提问美国驻华大使伯恩斯周三称中国没能禁止黑市销售芬太尼美方将一直努力敦促中方禁止中国黑市的企业销售芬太尼但是迄今为止并没有看到中国政府在此方面取得了任何的进展你对美国
strictly cracks down on drug-related crimes and played an important role in cracking down on drug-related crimes. The U.S. also benefited from the efforts. Why the U.S. government smeared China and forgot all of the benefits that they gained, sanctioned Chinese companies, and severely damaged the foundation of further cooperation on this issue. Does the U.S. wants to seek further cooperation to address drug-related issues in the U.S., or is the U.S. going to put China on a more priority basis? That's the question that I would like to ask you to ask to Ambassador Burns. The Chinese government always strictly cracks down on drug-related crimes. China is the first to the, in the world to have officially scheduled fentanyl as a class and has put precursor chemicals under the most strict control. The so-called China transporting precursors to the U.S. via Mexico is purely disinformation. The root causes of the fentanyl abuse in the U.S. lies in the country itself. Reducing domestic demand and supply is the way to address the root causes. The U.S. needs to do more serious reflections on itself. Instead of smearing others and shifting responsibilities, the U.S. should work to reduce the demand for drugs at home, strengthen management of prescription drugs, and step up public awareness campaigns about the harm of narcotics. Next one, please. Thank you. Question from Reuters. U.S. lawmakers have asked the State Department to bar Hong Kong's chief executive, John Lee, from visiting San Francisco during November's Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit due to his role in Hong Kong's national security law. What is the China side comment? APAC has its organization rules, and the host country is responsible for ensuring the successful participation of representatives of all members. The U.S., as this year's host, promised to fulfill its responsibility and abide by relevant APAC rules and procedures to facilitate the participation of representatives. And abide we believe that the U.S. will follow through on its commitment and ensure the successful participation of Hong Kong representatives and other representatives. Next one, please. Anything else? That's the end of today's briefing. And last but not least, I have a notice. Tomorrow's press conference, that will be the press conference on June the 9th, will be held at 2.30 p.m. I look forward to meeting you here by then.